All right, showing this one from the very beginning today, and that's because it is the no roll challenge. So we have to show every single turn just to make sure that I didn't roll at all. Now, if you've never seen this before, maybe you're new to SAP, uh, way back when I started, probably the end of 2021, everyone was obsessed with this challenge. Anyone who had a YouTube channel and were playing SAP was going for this challenge. And uh, I, I did it originally way back uh, in pack one. Pack one is obviously very different now, but I thought it'd been such a long time, I'll give it a try in one of the other packs. So we're going for a golden pack. And uh, I feel like, I don't know, I can't really decide if this is a good pack for no roll or not. There's not a huge amount of scaling until late on. So if you get lucky with particular pets that you find, then maybe you could sort of uh, rush to a win without um, without needing to scale yourself. And uh, here, yeah, one of the things you do get used to when you're doing no roll is just buying everything you can. <laughs> so there, like I bought, sold the stoat. There's probably nothing on tier two that I was looking for, but I did it anyway. And uh, you just get into the habit of doing that to try and uh, maximize everything that you get. So um, this worked out quite well. We had the cone snails and then I got the guinea fowl. So we can just start buffing the guinea fowl with the stuff that we get. And we actually get double magpie in the, uh, in the shop, which is very fortunate indeed. You'll, you will find when you're trying to do this that you're frequently not getting, uh, or you're missing out on levels all the time. And uh, you can go many, many turns without finding duplicates. So that was very fortunate. We're gonna lose here though but that's not such a big deal because we are going to get a level up on turn five and we get the choice between falcon and saiga antelope so i think we'll take falcon since we can use the uh, cone snail with it although maybe i'm just going to keep the guinea fowl we've also got baboon in the shop so we'll definitely bring that in i think i'm just going to keep the falcon frozen for just now until the baboon uh, is ready to buff it and yeah, we'll leave the uh, cherry because we might be able to freeze something like um, if we get uh, lettuce, for instance, we could buy the falcon and then it would hit all three units. Uh, I've been seeing a, a few more people playing uh, flying fish lately. Not a very common unit at all, but it can be decent, in, especially in the early turns. And uh, But I think we're actually going to survive here. Luckily, we uh, generated enough trumpets. So this is another incredible shop. Double lettuce, double baboon. So now it's time to get rid of, um, yeah, we can just get rid of something here. All right, am I gonna do it now? I think here it would make more sense to just bring in the uh, falcon, buy the both lettuce, yeah. And then we can um, keep the baboon level up. I guess here, maybe I should have just gone immediately for the baboon level two because that can happen <laughs> where they buff each other. But ultimately it's not that big a deal. Next turn, we're gonna have the level two baboon buffing the falcon, which is the most important thing. And our stats look you know, decent enough for turn six that we could win anyway. And it looks like we're gonna do that. So now we can level up the baboon uh, or maybe I'm just going to actually run the three baboons separately and sell the silk moth. That's another possibility. I could level a baboon because we've got another lettuce. And if we brought in a tier five, it would get hit by the, the lettuce. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to buy the lettuce for a plus one one. And then there's nothing else we can do. So we just end the turn and we get the triple stack buff onto the falcon. And uh, that kind of um, level of... Rapid scaling can be very powerful in, in uh, Golden Pack Arena. Um, I think here, yeah, the the copied lizard tail is going to end up killing the lizard, but I don't think it's going to matter because they have uh, the secretary bird, and so we lose there. But it's all right. We're already doing a lot better than I would expect on turn eight uh, for a, a, a no roll run. So I could also take this sea lion here. The problem with taking sea lion is the baboon can then buff it and uh, we level up and I get macaque and emu. Now 
I don't know about emu, but maybe I could just take macaque for one turn and get rid of the guinea fowl and then buy banana, which is exactly what we do. Immediately getting a 12-12, at least just for the time being. Yeah, here <laughs> the baboon buffs the sea lion. However, I mean, sea lion is also probably a keeper as well uh, in this particular type of challenge. The other team did have uh, did get emu, but um, I think, yeah, their setup's not quite right there. The emu only ended up kicking one thing forward, I think. So we're going to win there. And a falcon plus a blue ringed octopus is looking pretty nice as well. And there's also wolf. So here I'm thinking about replacing macaque with wolf because buffing macaque doesn't really benefit you much. Um, I don't think. I mean, it, its starting stats are so poor. And I guess, yeah, I guess weakness. There aren't, there aren't really any start of battle snipes in this. You know, one of the issues with macaque in customs is the fact that um, you can have the macaque get sniped and lose equipment. Like if you have pepper or melon, for instance, you can also have weakness replace it. But there's, n I don't, unless I'm uh, forgetting something, there's no start of battle snipes in this pack and there's no uh, start of battle weakness either. So the, the macaque should always generate the, the equipment for the orangutan. But in the end, I decided that I preferred wolf anyway. So we're going to buy the potato on the wolf. And then I guess I should just buy the cherry on whatever because there's nothing else to buy. And we'll just carry on with the uh, baboon scaling and the sea lion. Now, I do want to find a tier six as soon as possible because the baboon, I kind of feel like I can't get rid of it at this point. So we're going to have to try and find something quickly because next turn it's not going to do anything. Uh, however, here it looks like we're going to be fine again because of the pigs. I think we were relatively comfortable there anyway. So pita on falcon seems sensible. I mean, I can buy sell the oyster here. It does me no good whatsoever. But like I was saying, you just get into the habit of buying everything you possibly can. Now we've got the double sea lion, so there you can see the baboon effect doesn't work. Um, we'll need to try and find a tier 6. A falcon level up would be good because then we might be able to find something. Unfortunately our brand new pita bread gets overwritten. And then we're going to end up with uh, the copy backwards and forwards that you get when two falcons face off. Um, yeah, and they also copy a level 2 wolf, so we're going to get uh, destroyed here and brought down to one heart. So, in this shop, what, what would you do here? The two tier sixes, we don't really benefit from buffing either of them. And Bird of Paradise is one of those units that everyone looks for in golden normally, but for a no roll, it's pretty terrible because you're never, you're rarely going to be triggering it in the late game because there's just not going to be anything to buy. So we're just going to forget about it and we'll take the crane instead and hope that that can do something with the Falcon Pita, which it will do here, because we're going to get the, the health and then we get the attack from the crane. Again, I feel like uh, crane is, is a bit better in here than it is in uh, customs because you're it's not getting immediately sniped by all the many and various things that can snipe you in custom packs. Uh, I have been recording some stuff with crane in customs, so um, yeah, a little bit traumatized from that. So again, a terrible shop. We at least can buy the crane, but that's it. And on turn 13, getting a 1-1 one, one buff as your only purchase for a turn is brutal, especially when the baboon isn't working and we're only getting attack from the sea lion. I suppose I could put baboon to the front and get health from the sea lion instead, but uh, I didn't think about that at the time, maybe. So here's German Shepherd. We did, uh, did we mess them up with eggplant here? I think we moved something, but it's working out relatively well that we're copying a bunch of stuff. And I think, yeah, again, <laughs> the pigs are gonna get the final kill. So eight wins, turn 14. 
Um, we get a chocolate and a wolf. So I could level the wolf. I could level the crane. I could level the falcon. And I think I like leveling falcon because of the things that we could copy. You know, if you copied uh, a low attack unit at the front, something like, I don't know, Warthog maybe, it's probably unlikely that um, a falcon with 19 attack is going to kill a Warthog on turn 14, but um, maybe I could have actually moved the falcon back here in case we copy something like Wolf, because if we copy Wolf, there's not enough space. But yeah, here we could have copied uh, Beta, and we are going to copy Beta Fish. And so we get the melon and then the level two buffs as well, which worked out absolutely perfectly. And then we copy the beluga, although of course when you copy beluga, you don't, you don't get the contents and they had uh, slug inside. But again, the wolf and the pigs, I mean, if you're counting, how many rounds is that now that the pigs have got the final kill? So uh, we can buy the lettuce here and the apple onto the, our only tier six. And here we send it on turn 15, no roll challenge in Golden Pack. And wouldn't you know, the final opponent is Blammer. I always think it's kind of funny when you get matched with people who, you know, have almost become like uh, memes. You know, you see them so many times that uh, you're always looking out for them now as well. And we get matched with uh, their German Shepherd team. But the slug, we've got, we copy the uh, level two slug. And so the attack from the German Shepherd doesn't really matter. And again, the pigs get the kill. So it's been a long time since I've had a 10 win with a no roll challenge. Give it a try and let me know how you get on in the comments.